I didn't grow up in uh, a family that went to museums and galleries. Uh, uh, that's not my background uh, at all. Uh, actually, I remember uh, in grade school uh, one year, uh, the teacher asked what we had done during our summer vacation. And the kid next to me said that he had been in a program at the Guggenheim. And I just broke out laughing. Now, I had no idea what this Guggenheim was. It sounded, uh, and, it, and once I did find out what it was, I couldn't imagine uh, a kid spending his summer in a program at the Guggenheim. And what happened when I was 16, uh, I, I got a camera from my godmother. Uh, I was not at all uh, interested in photography before that point. Uh, I was getting that camera from my godmother that got me interested uh, in photography. After getting that camera, I went to see an exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum uh, in New York. And the exhibition, uh, Harlem on My Mind, was a very controversial exhibition. And it was because of the controversy, there was a lot uh, about this exhibition on talk radio and in the papers. Basically, I went to see the commotion around the exhibition, not the exhibition itself. So I walked into the Met, which was the first time I've ever been into a museum on my own. And I was completely and totally intimidated. Uh, I looked around. I had no idea where in the museum this exhibition was. And then started walking around the museum, acting like I knew where I was going, since everybody else seemed to be walking around acting like they knew where they were going. I said, well, I'll just start walking around, act like I know where I'm going, and hopefully, eventually, I'll find this exhibition, uh, which I did. And that exhibition uh, was pretty much the beginning for me. Uh, it was the first time I had seen pictures of black people, people who looked like me, on the wall in a museum. I began to notice in the time in what was then called section two, the art section, uh, on the last page, there were all of these exhibitions listed. All the way at the bottom, there were listings for photography shows. So I was like, wow, I can, I can go see these exhibitions, photography exhibitions. Uh, at that time, there weren't a whole lot of galleries in New York showing photography. So it was actually a very short list. I looked at a lot of work, and I was basically looking for those things that began to resonate with me. And the things that began to resonate with me uh, were photographs of people. And just stand in front of these pictures and look at them and try to understand uh, what, I was, what I was looking at. The only art school I knew was the School of Visual Arts. Uh, so I went down there, got the application, uh, applied, and I got in. Uh, I not only got in, but I got a scholarship uh, with a photograph. And that was the first time that uh, I thought I might actually have a life in this. Form communities, don't network. Forming a community, to me, uh, implies something a little more authentic, meaningful, and that you're forming a mutual support network. You're supporting others, others are supporting you, and you kind of help each other uh, get to wherever it is that you're trying to get to. So it's not just a question of making good work because you like it, but good work because it contributes something to this conversation that is going on, whether you're aware of that conversation or not. People that you're showing your work to are highly aware of that conversation.
I think it's almost impossible, but at the very least, it's very difficult to make good work, show it to a lot of people, and nothing happens. It just doesn't work like that. Most people that I know, even if I introduce them to an artist that they don't know, the first thing they say is, uh, can I look at your work on the website? And the answer has to be yes. 